good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us today. I am your presenter for Google Drive and Google Docs. I have my screen display for you to join us on the Nearpod link here. So if you can um, go to join.nearpod.com and then you wanna put in the join code, we can go ahead and get started. I see so far two people have joined, so I'll give you a couple of more minutes to join. Thank you, Sarah, for drop, dropping that in the chat. Pleasure. While we're waiting, it's going to take a minute to um, remind any, everyone to make sure you do sign in in the form in the chat there. I'll drop it in. Thank you, Elizabeth. <clears throat> okay, so I see we have 24 people that have joined so far. So we're going to go ahead and just get started. And for those that weren't able to join, the code is displayed here at the top whenever you get a moment to join. And it is in the chat. So we're gonna start with the icebreaker today. And the icebreaker is gonna ask you, as soon as it comes up. <laughs> you just won the Mega Millions in Maryland. List five things that you would do with your um, winnings. <laughs> what are the five things you would do with your winnings from the Mega Millions? Yes, pay off your parents' house. That's so sweet. <laughs> Yes, donate to a church. I definitely would do that too. Share with others. Travel, yes. Where would you go to? <laughs> I don't see anything in there about student loans now. <laughs> You wouldn't pay off your student loans. <laughs> Leave work. Oh, no. <laughs> Invest, retire, donate. Yes, yes, yes. I'm loving the responses. Spa day, look, spa month. <laughs> yes, college tuition, yes, these are all excellent responses. Yes. <clears throat> Try 
Travel, pay bills, donate. Yes. So I'll give it a couple of more seconds to let you respond. I just wanted to get a feel of who I'm, I'm presenting to today. And it seems like we all have a lot in common. We all want to travel, pay off our bills, donate. Some of us don't want to work anymore. <laughs> Yes, move to Hawaii. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with today's objectives. And our objectives for in, um, intro to drive management is today we're going to learn how to um, create folders, folders and the purpose of folders. We're also going to learn how to create shortcuts for our files, manage versions for uploading our files, and advance search and sorting um, our files by their size. Um, when it comes to creating Google Docs, we're going to create new docs. We're going to convert a Word doc into a Google Doc. We're going to add and format text into our Google Docs. We're going to add links, external and external links, into our Google Docs inserting and formatting tables into our Google Docs, images and drawings, and learning about voice typing. So in Google um, Drive, we have what's called Google Folders. And Google Folders is what I consider a container for you to organize your files, right? And in Google um, Drive, if we were to just upload all of our files, it would be so unorganized. So when you create these folders, these folders are there for you to organize your files so that it's easy for you to locate your files. Once the Google Drive has been installed onto your computer, any file or folders moved, saved, or uploaded into your drive are automatically saved. So you don't have to worry about Make, going back and saving your file because it's already there, okay? So now I'm gonna show you a video on how to create a folder in Google Drive. And this is about a two minute video. We can't hear any audio. You said you can't hear it? No. Maybe before you shared your screen, maybe the sound wasn't shared. We can't hear. No, I, I, I did share. Hold on for one second. Yeah, my volume is up. Um. Perhaps you could try to um, unshare your screen for a second, and then mm -hmm. when you reshare it, then just make sure that the uh, the bottom is checked where it says um, where it says to share, share your computer sound. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay, we hear something. There we go. It's there. Okay, welcome to How to Google. This is a quick video on how to make a folder in Google Drive. So first step, you want to sign into your Google account. So you can go to Google or gmail.com and then you're going to sign into your account. And uh, next step, you're going to go to Google Drive and that is drive.google drive.google.com so we'll go there and if you're not signed in like I said you'll sign in uh, the next step you will click on the new button and up here you've got options and you can create a new folder a new Google Doc a sheet a slide or you've got even more uh, Google My Maps, etc. So for a folder, 
we are going to click on the folder option and it brings a prompt or a pop-up rather which prompts you to create a folder name so this one we will call it how to create a folder and then you're going to click the create button now you have a folder in your Google Drive that you can add documents to uh, you can share this and here we'll show you you can just drag things into it so now we've moved something into that folder see that annual budget is now there uh, to get back out to the main part of the drive you've got a breadcrumb trail here so if I click back to my drive it goes back to the main one and if I click here again it's gonna bring me into that folder so when I'm in this folder if I wanted another folder same thing I would click new folder and we would name this one uh, folder 2 so now it's created another folder so we'll show you this breadcrumb trail so we go into this folder and there's nothing in this folder but we could add something in here as well but that is again how to create a folder on your Google Docs account Thanks for watching, guys. Hey, Ebony, you may be muted again. Okay, it looks like it's grayed out for you for unmuting. Let me go ahead and uh, click this. There we go. We are having fun today. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now that you know how to, or you watch the video, how to create a um, folder, I want you to name three folders that you plan to create for your specific content area. And I gave the example of um, a folder that I would create being that I'm a computer software applications teacher. I would create a folder for, let's say, Microsoft Word activities and lessons, PowerPoint um, activities and lessons, and Netiquette activities and lessons. So name three folders that you would create for your specific content area. Okay, so we have Spanish, yes, okay. Warm up classwork, independent practice, yes. And just like when I'm in my classroom, we're gonna move on when I have 80% participation. ESOL resources, PD document, list of students, yes. Algebra one, algebra one lab. Absolutely. These are good responses, good answers. So K through 12, yes. Forensic science. IEP meeting, due date, schedule, leadership team documents, yes.
We're almost there at 80%. I'm gonna keep this open until we're at 80%. I'm not, I typed mine, but I'm not sure how to get it to show on the screen. <laughs> um, you should be able to hit submit. Does it help you? You doing I'm okay? Sure. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, for some reason, I'm not away. For some reason, um, I do not see submit on my screen. <laughs> Yeah, it may be because the timer is up. So um, we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my Google Drive. And I'm going to model how to create a folder. And I want you guys to go into your drive as well. I just dropped the link in the chat. <clears throat> You're going to copy this link and paste it into your address bar. And it should bring you directly to your Google Drive. And you're going to create one of those folders that you just named. <laughs> We're going to do this together. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> so I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to get to your drive. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to select new once you're in your drive. And it gives you the option. It says new folder, file upload, folder upload, and so forth. We're going to select the new folder option. And then you're going to name your new folder one of those folders that you named in the previous slide. So for me, I'm gonna put in entrepreneurship because that's one of the classes that I teach. Two. And you'll notice that once you create the folder, the folder appear, appears under your My Drive, okay? So thumbs up if you were able to create a folder successfully in your Google Drive. All right. We got one thumbs up. <laughs> great, great. See the thumbs up coming in. Great, great. Excuse me, how do I make a thumb up? <laughs> <laughs> or you can just type thumbs up in the um, chat if you can't find a thumbs up icon. Oh, uh, emoji. <laughs> okay. That's fine. <laughs> Great, great, great. So we're gonna skip this one because that was a two minute timer. Great, great. <clears throat> so now we're gonna move into shortcuts for our files. And a shortcut is just a way for you to have the same file in two different places in your Google Drive. So you'll have an original file and then you'll also have a shortcut file, okay? That shortcut file is visible for um, everyone that you give access to and it always points back to the original file. Um, again, it allows you to have the file in the same, um, have the same file located in different places within your drive and you'll know whether or not it is an original file or a shortcut, shortcut file by the icon that's displayed at the bottom. So let me show you what that looks like. Give me one second. 
So let's say if I wanted to create a shortcut file for this document here, I would simply right click and then add shortcut to drive. And I'm gonna add it and place it into my entrepreneurship to folder. I have a lot of folders here, you guys. So just work with me. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can find it. Mm -hmm. It seems like I can't find it. So I will add the shortcut. I'm going to add the shortcut here to let's say my advanced courses, because I can easily find that. And leadership and school laws where I'm gonna place that shortcut, okay? So now when I go into my drive and I go to my advanced courses, notice that that shortcut is located in my advanced courses um, folder. And you know it's a shortcut because it has that little um, arrow icon that points and it's letting you know that's gonna point you back to the original document, okay? Also, I wanna note too, <clears throat> give me one second here. I'm gonna get out of this, that I can rename this if I want to. And I'm just gonna put uh, two, I'm just gonna add a two to it. It does not change my document. Only thing it does is it lets me know that it's still a shortcut and it still is my original document but I'm able to rename it in that second place that I placed that document, okay? So manage versions for uploading files is the next thing that we're gonna do. And I call this my abracadabra <laughs> trick when it comes to my files, okay? So with this, it's, um, it allows you to manage versions of your file um, without you having to create new links for your file. So let's say you, um, you assigned an assignment to your students and now you realize, oh my God, this is not the student handout or the exit ticket that I wanted to assign to them. Um, instead of going in and creating a whole new link and a whole new assignment, managing your versions allows you to actually go in and abracadabra change that file to the file that you want. So let me show you what that looks like. Let me go back here. And I'm going to go back to my recent. <clears throat> so let's say you wanted to assign, let's say, an exit ticket to your students, right? And this is what my exit, exit ticket looks like now. And you realize, oh my gosh, this is not the exit ticket that I want them to have. So this is what it looks like originally. So notice you have one, two, three, and so forth. But you say, oh my gosh, this is not what I want my students to have. You can go in, right click on that document. Where did it go? Select manage versions. Oops, where did it go? Uh-oh, I'm sorry, you guys. For some reason, it's not coming up the way I wanted it to. Uh-oh. Try, try a different one. Okay. Yep, it's not coming up. <laughs> okay, if you could 
see if you have like a word file or something in there that you could um, do that you can okay. use. Okay. Here we go. So, well, yeah. So, um, if I wanted to change this document into a different document, I can just simply go to Manage Versions, select up note, Upload New Version. And I'm going to change it to the document that we just seen. So now when um, your students go to select that document, it's actually going to show the one that you just changed it to, the version that you just changed it to. OK. And let me go back to that, which is here. And now my executive summary actually looks like that exit ticket instead of its executive summary, okay? All right, so thank you so much, Sarah, for that. My pleasure. So now we're gonna get into advanced searches. When you're searching for a file, because a lot of times you will have so many files in Google Drive that it takes so long for you to find one. As you can see, I have multiple files in my um, Google Drive, right? It's just no way that I can scroll through all my files to try to find a file. Well, you can use your advanced search here and it lets you get very specific as to what you're looking for. So I can look for my file type, I can look for a PDF, a, a Google Doc, a spreadsheet, and so forth. So I'm going to select uh, PDF. I can select who the owner is. I'm going to select myself, owned by me. And then I'm going to type in the word entrepreneurship. And then you can also go in and you can select in trash, start, and cryptic, and so forth. You can get very specific as to how you search for your document. Notice that once I select search, the only thing that comes up, number one, is your PDFs, because that's what we're searching for. And then the owner is myself. So any document that I created is here. OK. So anytime that you want to look for a specific document without having to scroll through your drive and take hours and hours to find a document, use your search, advanced search um, icon. And the next thing that we're going to go over with Google Drive, the last thing is sorting by size. When you're sorting by size, you can only use this in your Google storage um, icon. And what this does is it allows you to sort your files from smallest to largest without messing up how you have your files arranged. Let me go back. In your drive. Because notice that my files are arranged in my drive according to my last modified by me. And you can change it to whatever it is that you want. Last modified, last open. I choose last modified by me. Let me close this. So when I go to my storage here on the left-hand side, I can now sort my files by my file size. So notice right now that it's sorted by the largest size going to the smallest. If I click the arrow, it's going to change it from the smallest to the largest. Okay. All right, so I'm going to give you guys about a five minute break because there's a lot of information to go over. Um, that five the pops, minute break is going to. I'm sorry, say again, that again. And you said again. Case.
right? So make sure you're following those lines. All right. And when you write the lowercase n, you start from the middle. Can you, can you mute, please? <laughs> so I'm going to give you guys five minutes to go over what we just went over to maybe practice. If you need to stretch, you can go ahead and stretch. If you need to go to the restroom, you can go to the restroom. And then we'll come back and go into Google Docs. Yes, you will receive receive a copy of this presentation because I know it's a lot of information packed in an hour and a half. So I will share this information with you. Um, when we get into Google Docs, some of the information will give you step-by-step -step guidance as to how you can um, complete those tasks. So yes, I will share this with you.
All right. So now we're going to get into creating with Google Docs. And just out of curiosity, um, I, I insert a poll into the presentation to find out how many of you have used Google Docs in your classroom? Have you used Google Docs in your classroom? Okay, great. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's good. A lot of you guys are familiar with um, Google Docs. Okay. <clears throat> I don't see any no's, so okay. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Okay. A lot of yeses. Oh, yeses. Oh, okay. We have one no. Okay. All right. Couple of no's for the most part. Uh, no, it's up to you. Um, is it Sadiq, Sadia, Sadika? It's up to you. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so the purpose of Google Docs, um, Google Docs is a word processing application that allows you to create, edit, and collaborate on documents. So um, there are several ways that you can create a new Google Doc. You can select the um, file, um, select new file um, while already in Google Drive. I should have said Google Drive, I do apologize. Um, you can select the waffle in the left-hand corner to gain access to Google um, Docs. Or you can simply go into your browser and type in Google Docs and then log in. Um, again, the benefits of using Google Docs is it's good for collaboration, is easy access at all times, and it automatically saves anything that you type into the document. So before we get into converting a um, Word document into Google Docs, I'm going to show you how to create a new Google Doc. So again, um, you can go to your Google Drive if you're already in your drive, and you can select new Google Docs. We can do a blank doc or for from a template. You can also open up your browser. Use the waffle here on the left hand side, which is something that I like to do. I prefer using the waffle. Um, that's just a, a habit of mine, but whatever you're comfortable with, you can, you know, definitely open a Google Doc however you want. But I use the waffle and select the Google Doc here. And once you select the Google Doc here, it gives you the option of um, creating a blank Google Doc or using the template as well. Okay, and then the lastly, you can always go into your web browser, type in Google Docs, and that will allow you to open a Google Doc. Next thing that I want you guys to learn to do is how to convert a Word document into a Google Doc. So for the most part, the way that you convert a Word document into a Google Doc, let me go back to the Nearpod presentation, is you can upload a Word document into your Google Drive. And once you upload that document into the drive, you simply right click on the document and select open with, and it gives you options to, um, as to which you can open it up with. And you will select Google Docs. So let me show you what that looks like. Ooh. I'm just gonna go into my drive. Let's go back into my drive. And I'm going to go into my recents. And we're going to locate a Word document here. I have a Word document. Right click, select open with. 
in Google Docs. Okay, once I select Google Docs, it's going to automatically convert that Word document into a Google Doc. You know it's converted into a Google Doc because of the icon located on the left-hand side. So now when I go back into my drive, I should be able to see this um, document as a Google Doc Recents. Uh -oh, my internet connection seems like it's going a little slow now. <laughs> Let's give it a second because I want you guys to see. And it did not actually do what I wanted it to do. But you should see this document. It should come up as a Word doc. It should have an icon with the W. And it should also have the icon with the um, Google Doc. But my computer is working a little slow right now. It's, spinning out of control. So um, we're going to continue to move on in the presentation. So adding and formatting text in the Google Doc is very easy. Once you open that Google Doc, you simply start typing um, and you can format your text using not the ribbon menu, but the toolbar. <laughs> So once I create a new document, oh my gosh, this is just going so slow. I'm so sorry, you guys. I don't know what's going on with my internet connection now. <sighs> Gotta love technology. Okay. Okay, let me give it a couple of minutes. If, oh, I'm not alone. That's good to know. <laughs> oh, that's so good to know. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to open up this document, hopefully to open up for me to be able to start typing in it so you guys can see instead of starting a new one. Yes, it does. Okay, so now as you see, this is a blank document. Once you um, create a new document, you can simply start typing in it. Um, I'm going to type in, this is a new document for conference presentation. And just like um, if you were working in, let's say, Microsoft Word, you have your toolbar up here. Your toolbar allows you to um, manipulate your, uh, your text how you want to. So if I want to turn the word presentation into um, make it bold, I can select the B. If I want to take the um, whole entire text and increase the font size, I can do that. If I want to change the font um, type, I can do that as well. If I want to change it to a title, I can do that. So everything that you want to um, do to manipulate your 
tax, you'll find on a two bar, there are so many things that you can do. You can add bullets to it. You can add color to it. You can add borders and shading. All of that is found on the two bar. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because that's, um, you know, pretty much common and common knowledge. And once you get into your document, you can change it to how you want it to look. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So now I have another question for you, and that is, what is your most useful feature on the Google um, Doc toolbar? So what feature do you use the most? I know for me, I'm always using an insert tab when it comes to my Google Docs. I'm always inserting a table or inserting a link or inserting an image. What feature do you use the most? Mm -hmm. Hyperlinks, yes. We're getting into that in just a minute. <laughs> Graphs, images, yes. Formatting margins, yes. Encoding. Templates, yes. Work smarter, not harder, right? <laughs> Sharing links, yes, especially with our students. Different fonts, using different fonts, yes. Great, great, great. All right. So we're going to pass this and we're going to go into adding links into our Google Doc. So there are two ways you can add links into your Google Doc, and that's adding an internal link into your Google Doc and an external link into your Google Doc. Um, internal links basically are used um, for like if you want to reference another point in your document. Um, you see this a lot. Um, when you're using a table of contents or if a if there is an assignment and you want the students to be able to reference a specific um, topic, they can click on a link and it'll take them to that specific top topic within the document. So you see that a lot with internal links. And then your external links are those that are um, links that take them outside of the document. And those are like your YouTube page, your web page, and other applications. So I have a video on how you, you can um, create internal links into your document. We're not going to do internal links. We're not going to actually create internal links into your documents because there are so many steps to it. But we will um, create external links into a document today. Please let me know if you can hear the video. Can you guys hear that? No. Can you hear the video? No, no I we can't. can't hear it, but if you no. uh, unshare oh, okay. and reshare, okay. let's go back in. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen again and. I think when I share my screen and you All right, so I get asked this question a lot, a lot, and I always forget right, how to do this. I'm gonna make a video so I don't yeah, look it up my it up on my own channel. So really quickly, how to link inside of a Google Doc 
to other stuff in the same Google Doc. So in this case, I've got some thing called social media scripts. I got this LinkedIn subheading. You need to build a script, you know, based on blah, blah, blah. See the interest section for the shaper area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the word that I want to link internally. And I'm going to try to just highlight just the word, not the spaces around it or anything else. I've got butterfingers right now, so it's fun trying to make that happen. So you're going to right click here, insert link. And then what you're going to do is you're going to find headings and bookmarks. And you're going to find whichever thing that you want it to link to. So in this case, it was a social media script. No, no, it was uh, Shaper, I think. Yeah, Shaper Interests. There we go. So now, when I click on this and click on here, it goes all the way to the other spot that links in between the two different links. So if I want to click back um, here again, it goes right to the spot where I want it to go. So as I start filling this in, and this gets bigger and longer and faster, and there's more content in here, uh, I can jump from wherever I want to go to, to wherever I need them to go to afterwards, um, and then back and forth if I want to make reciprocal links and go back and forth. But that's how you do it, really quickly. Uh, just to recap, you click whatever you want to click. I'll, I'll kill the link again. Um, what you do is you right click it, insert link, pick the headings and bookmark that you want to go for. Here is the interests one. And now when I click on it, it lets me go down there. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. Okay, Ebony, you may be muted again. Okay. When I share my audio that it mutes me. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, I want to mention that um, when he said um, bookmarks, he mentioned bookmarks in the video. And the reason why I said that I was not going to, uh, we weren't going to actually do internal links is because you have to create those bookmarks first. And so once you create those bookmarks first, then you can go in and create those um those internal links into your document. So just wanted to add that note for those of you that are interested in creating internal links, you have to create the bookmark first and then you can create your internal link, okay? Um, let me go back to sharing my screen. And now let's get into inserting images and drawings. So inserting images, Oh, I'm sorry. No, before we do that, let me backpedal. Um, we're going to actually insert an external link into a Google Doc. So if you guys can open up a Google Doc, um, just a blank doc into your drive. And we're going to do this together. And I'm going to actually drop a YouTube link in the chat. And we're going to add this YouTube link into our Google Doc. Hey, Ebony, you may be... Oh, I'm sorry. I, th I thought you were frozen. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm actually copying and about to drop this into the chat. 
Okay. So here is the link. That I'm dropping into the chat. And I want you to add this link into your Google Doc. Like I said, we're going to do this together. Oops. So the first thing you're going to do is actually copy the link. And once you copy the link, you're going to go to insert. You're going to scroll to where it says link. And you're going to name the link where it says text. So you can name the link. Um, you can type in um, workplace, a uh, Google workspace presentation, and then you're going to paste the link here. How do you copy with Chrome? How do you copy the link with Chrome? You're just going to highlight the link and then copy. That's in the, um, that's in the chat. And once you do that, um, you're going to select apply. And once you select apply, I want you to actually click the link and tell me what do you see or what do you hear? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, Miss Catherine. So when you click the link, what do you see? Yes, yes, Miss Edna, that is correct. It takes you, yes, action songs for kids, yes. Yes, action songs for kids. That is correct. Yes. So if you were able to go to the link and it says action songs for kids and it's singing, I'm so happy you actually created the link and were able to create the link correctly. Very good, very good. <laughs> Said Walter singing, yes. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move on to inserting images and in drawings. So the same thing um, with like inserting a link. It's sort of kind of like inserting a link. When you insert an image or a drawing, you there are up oh, hands raised. Okay, yes, ma'am. Harry. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. I had a question. I know, like in some Google um, applications, when you insert a link, it'll make you actually see. You can see the video that kind of like it looks like the little box of the video. Mm -hmm. That when you touch it, then it can play. Mm -hmm. can you do that on a Google Doc too. Can you make it? Can you make it big like that? Like it looks like a little box too? Can you do that? Um, to be honest with you, I don't do that. I've never seen it done like that. Um, whenever I insert my links into my Google Docs, it's usually just a link itself. 
when I see it like that as a box, it's usually embedded in there, and that's the difference. When it's embedded, it looks like a box where you can click on it. Okay. Does that answer your question, Ms. Terry? Yes, it does. Because I know, okay. yeah, like I, I see people in chat saying in slides, I know that works in slides. I didn't know mm -hmm. if it was possible in docs to it all. Yeah, usually, usually, yeah, it has to be embedded for you to see that actual box. If you're just inserting a link, that's something totally different. Yeah. Yeah, and Sarah said, unfortunately, not in docs. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's embedded. Yes. Okay. You're welcome. Um, let's go. Okay, now inserting images. So inserting images is the same thing. Um, you would go to your your document. Where is my document? Because I have so many of them open right now. And I would go to insert. And image and I can upload the image from my computer. I can search the web. I can get it from my drive, my photos. I can insert it from a URL or from my camera, right? So let's go to um, search the web. I use search the web a lot. Um, I'm not a, a search uh, upload from my photos. I just, I don't know. I, I, it's For me, it's easy just to Search a photo from um, from the web, select, type in what it is that I'm looking for, and then insert it into my document. So if we're searching from the web, I would type in, let's say I'm searching for a picture of a tiger. And because we're in the school system, I want something kid friendly. I would select a picture of a tiger here, select insert. And the picture of the tiger appears in my document, right? So now I have the option of resizing the document. If I have text within my document, I can choose how my image displays within my text and the, the options are down here. But then I can also freely move my image around my document how I want. It's not letting me do it right now. <laughs> but you should be able to move it freely around your document, however you want to move that image, OK? It's not letting me do it. All right, so that is a real quick, easy way to insert an image. You can also, to go onto the internet, look up an image, copy, and insert. But this, to me, is the easiest way to insert an image. Again, you also have the option of if you have a photo in your um, your photo in your library, you can insert it from there and so forth. Also, with inserting a drawing, inserting a drawing to me is like inserting a signature. So you can go in here, insert a drawing. Let's wait for it to come up. I'm going to select the text box feature here. Let's say I'm going to type in my name because I want to insert my name somewhere on my document. I'm going to save it and close it. And then it's going to appear on my document. Oh, if it's OK, if we can get it to save and close. <laughs> And here is my drawing on my document. And it, again, you can resize it. You can edit it. You can decide how you want it to appear around your text and so forth. Okay. Inserting and formatting tables. Same thing. You're going to go to your insert tab. Always start with your insert tab. It's the easiest way to insert anything into your document. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to select insert table. I am the type of person I like to draw out my tables. So I'm going to draw out my tables and my table appears. If I want to format my table, I highlight it, select the three dots here. Once I select the three dots, table option, this allows me to manipulate my table how I want. 
I can choose what color I want my table. I can choose how large I want my cell um, borders to be. I can choose the cell borders and so forth. Also, you can use your tool um, bar up here to manipulate how you want your text to appear within your um, your uh, within your table as well. Okay. And let's see. And voice typing. Voice typing is dictation. It's a form of dictation, okay? Um, I wish they had this when I was in college, but they did not. <laughs> and so instead of um, typing out responses, you can actually speak out your responses. And I think this is a really good feature for um, your students with disabilities, your IEP students, your ELL students. This is something that they can really, really um, utilize when they're answering their um, homework assignment, when they're completing their homework assignments or they're doing collaborative work um, with their peers. And let me show you how they do that. So you simply go under your toolbar. I mean, let me erase all of this. Let me delete all of this. Oop. Let me delete all of this. I'm going to go to my tools and I'm going to select voice typing. And then I'm going to select the voice icon to start speaking. Thank you for attending today's presentation, period. When I finished, I select the icon again and it turns the voice um, typing off. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yes, I love it for ESOL students as well. Yes, and IEP students. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And so um, now to end my presentation, I have an activity for you. It is about eight questions. It's called Time to Climb. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have one more question for you first. And that question is, please provide two examples of how you could use voice typing in your classroom. Can you upload the recordings? No. So this is not... Um, this is not like screencastify. This is more like dictation. Thank you. Mm hmm <laughs> All right. So um, I know it's not going to take you guys four minutes to um, answer this, but provide two examples of how you could use voice typing in your classroom. Yes, Elizabeth, it is like talk to text. And you know what, too, Elizabeth, I think it's um, Google's way of trying to catch up to what everybody else is doing, because even in Nearpod, um, with open-ended questions, you have the option of um, allowing your students to record their responses. So a lot of um, different platforms like Nearpod, um, what else do I use, um, Lumio, um, I want to say Canvas too. Canvas allows students to um, talk, talk, text their answers. Yeah. Yes. Yep. The same as iPhones. Yes, exactly.
Yeah, take them. Yep, talking minutes, meetings with staff. Absolutely. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, giving instructions for EOL students. Yes, peer feedback. Yes. Oh, I like the responses. <laughs> Pre writing and brainstorming. Yes. Struggling writers. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You need a quick response from students. Absolutely. Collaborative conversations. Yes, space students putting their ideas in writing. French students. Yes. For feedback, yes. <laughs> yeah, especially as an educator, like instead of having to type everything, type out our responses to our students, we can just simply go in and speak it, yes. Quick oral response, yes, practice short reading. Okay, so we got about 18 more seconds and then we're going to move into the last activity of the day for my part, my portion of the presentation and it is called a time to climb we're just going to give a recap of everything that we went over. And you can go ahead and select your emoji when it comes up. And let's let's go to the beach since you guys want to travel once you win that mega millions. Okay, give it 30 more seconds and then we'll go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and get started. And good luck to you guys.
Okay, Maria, you holding on the uh, first place real strong. <laughs> Maria is not playing. <laughs> Ooh. All right, Rachel. <laughs> well, congratulations, Rachel, for placing first place. That was out of nowhere. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for participating today. Um, I truly appreciate everyone um, participating. I'm going to turn the meeting over to Miss Sarah now. And I am going to, when I have a moment, I will drop a link in the chat to give you access to the presentation for your reference for later on. Um, trying to stop this. <laughs> so I can keep going. <laughs> You're so welcome. Thank you so much, Miss Ebony. Everybody, let's give her a round of applause, virtual round of applause. Great Thank job. You. Yeah, that, was, that was such a great session. So, um, so we really enjoyed learning all that information with you. And right now we are about to take a quick break and we will be back on at Thank 1045. You. Um, so remember to keep up with your bingo board. Uh, we had a few people yell out bingo so far. So keep going with your bingo board and we will see you all back here at 1045. <laughs> 